Oh, and let me just say, don't get so caught up on the word mentor. You don't need to ask, hey, can you be my mentor? You don't need that. Don't get so caught up on the word and get more focused on the relationship. Hello everybody, my name is Naya and I'm the Black Female Engineer. I provide content for new and aspiring software engineers and today we are talking about how to find a mentor, specifically finding a mentor in the tech realm. Now, if you're looking to let this be a very quick process and a one week process of finding a mentor, this video is not for you because finding a mentor and cultivating that relationship takes months, months and months and months, because that is really how you will get the most out of the relationship. So let's get to it. The first thing you want to make sure you're doing is being active in the dev community. This could be from Slack channels, Facebook groups, Twitter, make sure you're being active in the dev community as a whole. If where you are, they're providing meetups of some kind and you feel safe to do it, Go to those meetups. I know it can be very scary to go somewhere where you know nobody. Believe me, believe me, I am not, it's, it's hard. But it can really be what sets you up for success in trying to find a mentor and honestly also a job, but that's a conversation for a different day. And it can really be what sets you up for success for creating and cultivating these amazing relationships. LinkedIn and Facebook are also great places to try to find a mentor. Facebook, I really like Facebook for this. Facebook, you could literally just go in the search bar and type up women in tech or minorities in tech or underrepresented groups and all of that. And you will find all of these different groups. Now, just because that group shows up doesn't mean that they're the right one for you to see if they're the right one for you. I highly recommend just clicking on it and going through the different communications and the different posts throughout the like at least a few weeks because then you can see how active the members of that group are and you see the way they communicate. Are they very formal with each other? Is it more laid back? Is it really more spammy and you really won't get something out of it? Go through that research because we want to make sure you find exactly what you're looking for. Another route you can go is going on LinkedIn and looking up people in the profession that you want to be or in the company that you want to be in. So you can search Google or something like that. And let's say you live in Austin. So Google in Austin and see who pops up. And when you see someone who has the same background as you, then I say message them, message them and say, Hey, my name is Naya. I really would like to connect with you and find out a little bit more about your story. I am new into coding and development and I would love to hear about what got you here because I am a black woman. I would always look for black women to pop up on the LinkedIn search. And I would also say that, I would say, especially being a black woman in tech, I would love to hear about your experience. If you're free, I would love to do a 20 to 30 minute call. Honestly, just ask and do this with a couple of people because sometimes people don't check their LinkedIn. Sometimes people don't want to talk to you and that's okay, that's okay. But try to message a few of these people, at least a, five of these people and be on calls with them. Actually try to talk with them on the phone and ask them how they got here. Ask them about their story. Tell them about yourself, your goals, and end it with one asking for advice and also asking if you could keep up communication with them. This is going to be the first step into building that mentor mentee relationship. And so asking if you can maintain communication really just helps open the door a little bit more for that relationship to happen. And also ask them what groups they suggest you join, what Slack channels, what Facebook groups, etc. They suggest you join because then at least you have someone vouching for a certain group and you can kind of go into it a little bit with less hesitation. And there's just so much out there, y'all. It's it, it's so hard to keep up with. So just asking people directly what groups they suggest can really, really help with finding that right group for you. Me, I made sure to join a couple of different groups that aligned with different parts of my identity. So for example, me, I'm a black woman in tech. So the three groups I would recommend looking for is one that catered to women in tech, one that catered to black people in tech, and one that catered to black women in tech. And so that is really what I mean by catering the groups or finding groups that catered to the different parts of your identity. And then when you find the ones for you, be active, be active. It's okay to 
you know, be a fly on the wall for a little bit and just see how things are going and everything. But be active. Introduce yourself. Say, hey, I'm Naya. I am new to this and I'm really hoping to learn more about X, Y, and Z. Any help y'all could provide or any resources y'all could recommend would be really appreciated. But no, introduce yourself and then just see how communication goes with different people and all of this. But now, make sure you're active. Make sure you're asking questions when you have questions about your learning, about leak code problems, about interviews. Ask those questions. And also make sure you're staying up to date with this group so that you're not only active when you have a question, but you're also making sure you're putting in your two cents when other people have questions. Because that's not cool, y'all. People who are just takers. I've said this in different videos. Don't take, take, take. Like, make sure we are building mutual mutually beneficial relationships. And as you are active in these groups, if you see people that you would like to learn more about, simply just ask me like, hey, I would love to speak with some of y'all about how you got to where you are today. If you are free, please let me know. I would like a 20 to 30 minute call. Now, that being said, with Facebook groups, there are groups for learning, and then there are groups for just the dev world in general. So if you're in a strictly learning group, like 100 Days of Code, I think that's what it is, 100 Days of Code, or something like that, that may not be the best place to go for asking for advice and insights because everyone around you is in the same place as you. Do you see what I'm saying? If everyone is learning HTML and CSS, no one can really tell you how they got to their spot at Google because no one's there yet. So make sure you also are keeping in mind who your audience is. Oh, and let me just say, don't get so caught up on the word mentor. You don't need to ask, hey, can you be my mentor? You don't need that. Don't get so caught up on the word and get more focused on the relationship because the word means nothing, to be completely honest. The word doesn't mean much unless you're part of an actual mentoring program. That is what it has defined itself as. Other than that, don't get so caught up on the word and really think about the relationships because people can also kind of get a little bit more hesitant to assist if you ask, can you be my mentor? Because they may think they're not in the place they would like to be to help, to to be that for somebody. And yet, if you hadn't asked, they would have been able to provide you all of these resources. So don't get so caught up on the word. I'm just using this word because that is really kind of the role that they would be, but that doesn't mean you have to ask. You have to say mentor. But no, keep on with this pattern of talking to people, reaching out to them, having calls, and it's, it can be an exhausting process. It can be very time consuming, but honestly, that's how you get the best results, basically. That's how where when it's time for you to start looking for a job, people will feel more comfortable referring you to a job or people will feel more comfortable saying, hey, we actually just got an opening. How about you apply? So don't say to yourself, oh, I'll start looking for a mentor when I start looking for a job. No, it's best to start this as soon as possible because that way when it's time that you really need something like a job, you have already cultivated these robust relationships with people. And that's why I say this is not not a one week process or whatever this this takes time but can end up so rewarding afterwards because now once you get the job you still would want somebody to kind of assist you into that transition of going from learning to code to being a developer yourself and how should I do this how should I talk to managers how should I do X, Y, and Z. And so having someone more experienced than you kind of show you the ropes, whether or not they are part of the company you just got hired for, it helps a lot. Especially because in software engineering, people move around a lot. People hop from place to place. And so in a couple of months, in a year, in two years, you need a new job, you have all of these allies on your side who would be willing to help you, lift you from where you are, and take you to this new place. So that's why it's so important to find a mentor, find somebody. Anyway, I hope this helped. Let me know if it did. Let me know what questions you have down below in the comments. Like and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Bye.